right, all right, all right, people. We are interrupting that D Brown selection. Uh, let me just um, get this thing out of my face. And if you're logged into the Conduit Studios, you will see that there's a gentleman sitting to the right of me. And it is my distinct pleasure to introduce the Conduit listeners to Mr. Radcliffe Rudy Roy. And I know a lot of you don't know who Rudy Roy is. Um, you know I'm in the arts. And um, his name popped up on the radar when he was awarded. But you know what? I should let him tell me. He's shy. So I'm going to have to be gentle with him and tease the information out of him. But he was recently awarded a very, very prestigious award from Time magazine. Rudy, can you tell the Conduit listeners what that was? Um, good, good night, Conduit listeners. Um, the award was um, the Instagram photographer of 2016. Um, it's an award given to a, a photographer, the Instagram photographer that, I guess, time considered to be the one who exemplified um, uh, a consciousness for social justice for that year. And so they awarded me the, the, the distinction. And you know what? It is a um, very timely award, and I think very, very well deserved. Rudy Roy is uh, known among artistic and photographic circles for someone who has, is it 120,000 Instagram followers? 270,000. It's now gone up to 200 and se You heard me, people. This man sitting right here has 270,000 I mean, we're talking about Beyonce numbers now, right? For no, those people who are no, into... No, no, no. I'm speaking it into the, reality. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I'll take it's it. It's getting there. I'll take it. Right? Now, tell me, Rudy, you've not long ago were living in Jamaica. Yes. How long is it since you've been in the U.S.? 23, 23 years. Two, 23 years that you've been in, in the U.S.? How long have you been doing? Because you've been um, described as um, a, an activist photographer. That's just one of the tags that people have given you. How did you fall into that as opposed to photojournalism? What's the difference between photojournalism and photo activism? Um, if you ask me my opinion, I don't think there is a distinction. If you're, if you're a human being, you have to be an activist. Um, you have to be a, you have to be an activist for food. I'm living in this country. You're told every day that the food that you're eating is organic, and well, it's not. We we from the Caribbean know that an organic food, are food that you you get from the soil, soil that has gone through crop rotation, mm -hmm. the, the proper crop rotation. So, you know, an activist is somebody who who cares about the food they eat, the clothes they wear, the air they breathe, the the community they grew up in. And so, walking around in bed -Stuy, I've lived in bed -Stuy for 15 years. Um, it's very difficult for me to, to, to go through my day-to-day -day without being conscious of how my neighbors live, um, of how the less fortunate in our society live. And so, I found myself turning my lens onto those things that felt like me um there was a time when i felt very disenfranchised as a, a black male growing up in america and so it was easier for me to talk about those stories as it related to my own life so so did you have your instagram account when you were in jamaica or no. was this something that kind of just blossomed when you this, got to the states this i mean well instagram is not that old right right but i got on I got on very late over the past four years. I've used it to kind of talk about the things and the issues that are dear to me. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that you, I'm sorry, I'm trying to uh, get this live. We know that you um, also happened to become a historian of Black Lives Matters. How did that come about? Um, 
it's it's again it's difficult to 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 go around this country most of the assignments i was getting allowed me to go from alabama to milwaukee to dallas to louisiana and it's difficult to go through these to these cities and not want to bring back the information to the blue bubble as i call it the californias the new yorks where we have already a very liberal lifestyle and tolerant and very tolerant mm -hmm. uh, but we also but we do not know what what the lives of those black men who live in chicago are like um recently i did an assignment for the new york time new york times in chicago and it really changed my life because before i got there i felt like i looked at black males African-American black males as completely different from the Caribbean black male psyche. And so for them, for me, they were kind of the them, the they. The same way, you know, you'd hear a, 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 a person speaking about black folks as them and they. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I always had Southern black males in that space where they were, they were different from me. But I remember doing this assignment and just falling in love with the idea that our histories are, are very the, similar. Are the same. We're coming from the same branch, same. the same root. And so in telling that story, I had to now draw upon my history and my experience as a, a, a black male in America, a black male from Jamaica, and putting both stories together and, and, and then displaying it as the same story. What, what is it? So uh, the question I want to ask you, and we're kind of talking in a bubble, because your work is so visual, and we don't have the benefit of seeing your work. But for those conduit listeners who are logged on right now and want to just have a look at your images that are so powerful, they're so breathtaking. I'm thinking about that, that image of that man with his hands up in the cotton field. That evokes so many emotions. It's, it's just, I don't know if visceral is the right word that I want to use. It is right. But where can people just go and sample your work? I didn't want to post anything because I wanted you to be here and then give them the opportunity to go and look at your work while you're in the Conduit Studios. So what's um, the best place for them to see your images? I think my Instagram feed is the place that is, I mean, it's the, the best word I can use is interactive because I post almost every day. Um, it, it is, it is, it is like my blood, my sweat. I mean, it's at Ruddy Roy. Um, that's my Instagram handle. Which is R-U-D-D-Y and then R-O-Y-E. -E. And my website is RuddyRoy.com. And it's just filled with image after image. Do you have an idea of what you want to capture when you go to a, a site, a location? As narcissistic as this sound, I, I look for stories that I'm familiar with, whether they're the ones that I grew up with in Jamaica as a child or the ones that I've lived through while being here. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to engage with somebody when the story lives inside of you. So it's easy to talk to them. It's easy to relate. It's so easy. that empathy. Yes brings out the story. Yes. So the question that I wanted to ask you, because I'm looking at your images and I know that the captions for your pictures, as you say, the picture itself is kind of one dimensional and it's the caption that finishes it off. Which is more important to you? Think, I don't think one can live without the other. I think if you understand the, the iconography of black images in this country, a woman has gone through the, she's a prostitute, she's a sex symbol, she's a, never a strong black woman. And our black male have gone through, he's a thug, he's a lazy person, mm -hmm. he's a slave, he's a sambo, he's mm -hmm. a, all these images that have historically come down as our legacy um, are things that Gordon Parks tried to change, Roy de Carava tried, tried to change, um, Jules Allen, Adja Cowens, um, and all these, and now Rudy Roy, you know, I'm 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 a, I'm a part of that lineage that is saying to to the other because my work is for the other, right? That these images are your uncles, they're your brothers, they're your 
The parallels are there. We're human beings. We're human beings. The only difference is I wear. But we need to we need to forget about the color of skin as being other. Yes. Because if you continue down that path, and we see the genesis of it right now, we're living it right now, where the others are being so marginalized, we're wondering, are we living in 1966 Mm -hmm. or 2016? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you feel about how far black people have come in their history? You know, I'm very torn where that is concerned because on one hand, I have seen where we have made strides. I mean, we're Mm -hmm. voting. Um, we do have, a or choice. not, as the case may be, right? We have, <laughs> but we have the choice. We have to. the option too, right? Um, there is a sense of economic growth in certain in Atlanta. In I mean, I see it. I see black mm. folks making money. I just but don't, then losing their soul. I just don't see us coming together as a community, coming together as a people. I see, as I would like to call it, the vetted Negro. The mm. one guy that gets to go through the gate and he just shoots. Slams the door behind him. He's gone. <laughs> I don't, I mean, to, for me, the dream would be to see us forgetting about color, which to me is a distraction. Mm. Picking up our, our, our computers, logging on, making a database with black businesses and buying from one another. Y- you know what? As you mentioned that, a friend of mine, Donna Spence in the UK, she actually happened on this idea of visiting black businesses and promoting them on YouTube feeds. Mm -hmm. And it actually worked by black, Mm -hmm. Black Friday. Mm -hmm. So she flipped the script on Black Friday, which some people have this idea that it was the day when slaves were sold. You know, it was the day after Thanksgiving when the sales, but whatever. But use it to promote black. Black black businesses, yeah. So I like that, that concept. You say that you capture these images not for black people but for white people Mm -hmm. but there's been a back a black lash against that also right um the the black lash is it it a lot of folks have looked at it and have garnered pride from it Mm -hmm. um it has been the tip of the spear It, it 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 is the thing that goes into the flesh of what is happening now with black boys and black men in our society Mm -hmm. And for some reason, these images are are the images that people call upon when they want to talk about what we have been going through as black men and black black women. Mm-hmm. They're the, they're at the forefront mm-hmm. of these bullets, also. Absolutely, they never used to be, but now it's open season. Mm-hmm. Um, the question that I wanted to ask you next, and let me just uh, refer to my notes. Um, I had a pointer from Patrick Hamilton, who was the one that really was instrumental in, in you being here. Good Crazy guy. guy. Good guy. Crazy guy. We share the same name, but we're not related as far as I know. But he said to me, don't forget to ask, how do you pronounce it? Rudy? Ruddy. Ruddy. The Jamaican way. Ruddy. Ruddy. Not Rudy. Don't forget to ask Ruddy the significance of James Baldwin. Hmm. Um, wow. Our, our brightest mind. Um... Who couldn't live in America? Couldn't. He had to go to London. And Paris. The, um, the, the most... Here's, here's the thing that I, I, I thought about recently. I was thinking about... Somebody asked me, why do I do this work? What's mm. the secret? And I said to them that I have no... It, there is no secret. Um, he saw the person said, what's the answer? I said, there is no answer. Mm. I said, because, the, because, I, because I do not know what, what my work will do 10 years from now. Then I, then I, I'd be, it would be very egotistic of me to think that anything that I do now changes anything, because I don't know the answer. I think the most important thing is to do the work, to leave it. Bob talked about the, the a leaf, and and, and the, the, a leaf does not wake up and go, you know, I need to be the brightest leaf. <laughs> a leaf understands that his its job is to make oxygen mm. and come fall. It falls. It falls. And I think that, that's how I live my life. I wake up in the mornings and the first thought, my first thought is to humble myself and to understand and remember why I'm doing this work. And just to do the work. Forget about the lights, forget about the accolades, forget about, just do the work. Because 20 years from now, somebody's going to come up behind me 
I need my work. Because as a society, we're, n we're not always ready for change. Mm. Change comes maybe 50 years after the first iron has been struck. Mm -hmm. But if somebody has to strike the iron. And if the work is there, mm. then when the society is ready, the next soldier to carry on will be found. There you go. I mean, your, your pictures, I, I just scratch the surface. And I'm a bookophile. Your pictures tell a story, every single one of them, and then coupled with your captions. Do you meditate? Or does it, the first thought that comes into your head is what the caption is? You, you know, when I was 12, this, is, this might sound really... I don't know how this is going to sound, but I'm going to say it. When I was a child, I only prayed for one thing. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to be like Solomon. That, I was 12 years old. 12. I remember that prayer. I've never prayed for anything else. When I was growing up, I didn't pray to be fed. I didn't pray. I didn't pray for easier life. I didn't pray to go to college. I didn't pray for my mom not to beat me. I pray, pray for wisdom. I pray for wisdom and understanding. That's it. That's the only thing I pray for. So tell, tell me about your background in Jamaica. Where where in Jamaica, or, you know, roughly, you don't have to... I'm from Montego Bay. I live in a community called Farm Heights. Um, it's 15 minutes outside of the city. Mm -hmm. um, I, we moved there in about in, in 1976. It's where I've grown up. Um, mm -hmm. It's a community. I know from Miss Falls all the way out to Killer. Mm. Most of these people, Miss Noble, um, Miss Maggie, Miss Touch, uh, Miss Marsh. I know everybody on my block. Though it has changed, when I go home, I am still a part of that community. Wow. And that's something that I've missed being here. Absolutely. America can be very singularly cold. Mm -hmm. I, I remember when I migrated from the, U the UK... I cried every night for four years. Mm. I wanted to go back to England so badly. But I said, you know, I kind of burnt my bridges in England because I, I do stuff like that. And I said, I can't go back. I can't lose face. Mm -hmm. I have to make this work. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've kind of made it work, but I, mm. it's not for me. Mm -hmm. it's not, I'm getting ready to move on because it's not good for my soul. It's tough. It's not good for my soul. I, I tell people all the time, and they think I'm joking, I could never live in the South. I went to South Carolina, and I almost had a nervous breakdown. No, it's, it's different. I went to um, the Gullah, Gullah Geechee yeah. Festival. Yeah. I went to uh, Hilton Head, and I almost had a nervous breakdown. When I go to the South, when I go to Florida, the thought that pops into my mind is I might be walking under a tree where my ancestor was hung. I'm very kind of... Of course, of course. I mean, I, I say to people the other day, I mean, I was still having this, because I have these discussions so often, I said, just imagine, because the blood, the blood carries everything. 